Live from the Jersey Shore to the world. Get up, get out, do something. Wake up with Jeremy Grunin. Take the show wherever you go. Download the free Radio Pup app for your smartphone or tablet. Join the conversation. 732-505-1160. News Talk Radio WOBM AM 1160 and 1310. Listen online at WOBMAM.com. Good morning, Tom's River. Good morning, Ocean and Monmouth County. And welcome back to Wake Up with Jeremy Grunin. I am Phil Brilliant, pinch hitting for Jeremy today. And it is 7.09. And I need to give a shout out to Mr. Keller at Tom's River High School North. Uh, Sarah Brilliant had to do her dad a favor this morning and walk the dog. So she's running a little late this morning as she runs into High School North. So please excuse her. Uh, There's my note for the day. Uh, But it is 36 degrees and it will be a high of 39 today and a beautiful weekend coming up. And as we speak of beautiful weekends, we talk about places to go and what to do in Ocean County. And with me this morning is I'm going to I'm going to butcher her. I I'm already I've practiced her name and I'm already butchering it. It is Jacqueline Wood and she is the Director of Education at the Tuckerton Seaport in Tucker, New Jersey. Welcome, Jacqueline. Hi Phil, welcome so much and you did not butcher my name, so thank you. Yes, I I I've been practicing it and <laughs> you know Zach threw me a little curve this morning cuz it's spelled a little differently, so maybe it was Jocelyn, but uh, but we're doing good and uh you know hopefully can I call you Jackie? Of course. Makes it easier. Thank you. So, um here this morning, we want to talk about the Tuckerton Seaport. I have been there. I was actually part of the development phase, uh, being an environmental consultant. I did some due diligence on the property when they were looking to, to build it. And uh, so I am somewhat familiar with it, uh, but hadn't been down there in a while until recently when I was down there a couple of weeks ago. And so it is a beautiful place. But let's, let's start with you. Tell me a little bit about yourself, your background, how you ended up at the Seaport. Well, I'm actually celebrating 10 years at the Seaport in March. Um, I am originally from Monmouth County. I went to Rutgers, studied uh, English and American Studies, and while I was there, I got involved with the New Jersey Folk Festival, which is the last Saturday in April, Mm -hmm. Um, and I got really interested in folk art through uh, working with the festival and through decoy carving. I went to graduate school for history museums, Mm -hmm. and I worked in um, a a couple of maritime museums. Uh, It wasn't really a career trajectory, but it seems like You know, this is where I'm going. I've been at three maritime museums. And one of the things that I love about the seaport is that we were started, you mentioned the beginning of the museum, and we were really started as a grassroots effort by a group of people who wanted to preserve their history and culture. And um, so I started off running our Folk Life Center, and now I do education as well. And um, all that folk art that I studied with the Folk Festival in New Jersey we have at the seaport, so you can meet decoy carvers and boat builders and basket makers, and we're trying to keep traditional arts alive. Yeah, it is great. I think, uh, you know, I always say that um, there's a lot of great kept secrets here in Ocean County, and I think um, what the, the locals did down in Tuckerton when they really tried to bring the seaport back uh, was amazing. It was a lot of hard work. It was grassroots. I mean, they really started from nothing, but they really had, you know, this pearl in Ocean County that they had the opportunity to really make a, a place where tourists and, and locals would want to go and hear the story. Yeah, it's really amazing. I can't believe what people did to get this museum started. I mean, our founders were outstanding, and we're trying to keep that alive today. The museum, if you haven't been before, we don't want to be a hidden gem. Uh, we want everyone to know about us. We are 40 acres in uh, Southern Ocean County. We're right on Tuckerton Creek, so you can walk around the boardwalk and visit our 17 historic and recreated buildings. And they tell the story of life in South Jersey. So uh, we everywhere from the 1800s on up, how people lived in the area. They were living and working on the water and the land, going clamming and oystering and commercial fishing and carving ducks and um, building boats. And we really are trying to keep that story alive. And so a lot of people visit us all year long, but we've also got a ton of great events. So I really encourage everyone who's listening, if you haven't visited us before, Check out our website and see our list of events, and that's a great way to really get to know the museum. What's the website address? It's www.tuckerdenseaport.org, or you can go on Facebook, the Tuckerton Seaport, 
And if you go on our website, I hope you will sign up for our email list. I send out a weekly email that talks about everything we've got going on. Uh, that, that is great. So, of course, so you said you went to Rutgers University. I, I know by your resume you went to Douglas College. I did, So yeah. I went to Cook College. Oh, wow, so we were neighbors. We were neighbors. <laughs> well, you were there many years after me. Um, I did look at your resume. Um, and, uh, you know, but it's interesting, and this is a total change of subject. I don't know if you've been back there at all. Um, but the fact, does it bother you that Douglas College, Cook College don't exist anymore? One of the things that I loved about Douglas is that it was a women's college within a larger university. So I felt we had all of the benefits of being in a women's school, but the, also the benefits of being at a larger school. Um, I know that when I was there, Douglas wasn't what it was like when it first started, right. when it was the New Jersey College for Women. Um, but I hope that students still know a little bit about that history and have a little bit of that love for it and keep those traditions alive like sacred path and and things like that it's a you know yeah. time and marches on and things change but uh i hope that the students today love it like i did right and it sounds like you got really got your taste for what you're doing today at the folk festivals that douglas um and i believe that was the same day as ag field day yeah um, which cook college put on and uh you know that's that's where i got my uh my taste for beer so it was a little different taste that I ended up with when I left college. Well, I got to tell you, the story of the Folk Festival is a story of beer. We started over 40 years ago, and it was supposed to be one year, and they had a small amount of money to put on a festival. And at that time, the drinking age was 18. And the story goes, they sold beer, and they made so much money that they were able to do the festival again the next year and the next year. And it's grown into a huge event. We're now uh, a nonprofit. Uh, we have a board of directors. I'm on the board, and I uh, work as the heritage director and coordinate artists for it. But uh, we wouldn't be there if it wasn't for beer. <laughs> so so uh, we did talk this morning about lowering the drinking age to 18. Are you saying that that's a good reason to do that because they get more people involved in the folk festival? You don't have to answer that question. <laughs> You don't have to answer that question. But, you know, one of the things I said I was going to ask you about was your thesis from graduate school, and you went to Cooperstown. I did, yeah, the Cooperstown Graduate Program. So most people have heard of Cooperstown with the Hall of Fame. Yep. There's also a, a school there um, for history museum studies. It's part of the State University of New York. And while I was there, I was very fortunate to find a thesis I really liked because a lot of work. And usually your thesis is not something anyone cares about after you're out of school. But I was really fortunate. I had met Gary Guyberson, who is uh, still the mayor of Port Republic. He's been for about 30 years. And he is a decoy carver. And it started out as a small project for a class. And if anyone's ever met Gary, he is a great speaker. And uh, it just grew and grew. And so I did a study of his work. And um, I remember when I first started at the seaport, I went to the New Jersey Decoy Collectors Association meeting. And at the first meeting, they said, oh, Jackie wrote her thesis on Gary. Come on up and tell us about it. Now, had you met him before? I, when I had met Gary through the New Jersey Folk Festival okay. when I was in college. So when I was uh, in graduate school and studying folk art, I thought I just have always had an affinity for ducks and decoy carving and loved it. So really, when I got this job at the seaport, my friends couldn't believe it. They're like, this is pretty perfect. <laughs> yeah, I mean, who to think that your, your thesis in college would turn into your profession years later? Yeah. And now being there 10 years and uh, again, you know, the Tuckerton Seaport a great location, a great place to spend your your days and your weekends and uh, we're coming up on a break so we'll be right back with Jackie. Uh, but please join the conversation call in at 732-505-1160 and we'll be back in a moment. The Sean Hannity Show, this afternoon at 3. Wake Up with Jeremy Grunin returns next. News Talk Radio, WOBM AM 1160 and 1310. Connect with Jeremy, 732-505-1160. Wake Up with Jeremy Grunin. News Talk Radio, WOBM AM 1160, 1310 and WOBMAM.com. Good morning and welcome back. It is Phil Brilliant in for Jeremy Grunin this morning on Wake Up with Jeremy Grunin. It is 721 and we are going to continue our conversation with uh, Jackie Wood of the uh, Tuckerton Seaport. She's the Director of Education and the Director of uh, Jersey Shore Folk Life Center at uh, the Tuckerton Seaport. So we were just talking about some upcoming events 
and uh, you know, reminded me that uh, you know Zach is a vegetarian, so he will not be joining the uh, Bacon Fest coming up. But tell us about some of the upcoming events at the Tucker and Seaport. Well, I love our events. We usually incorporate food and music and fun, and I do educational programs and you, a lot of our you, visitors. You had me at food. <laughs> we get a lot of people at food, right? So yep. food is so popular. Who doesn't love food? And food's really uh, one of the main stories that we tell at Tucker and Seaport. The story of how people were living off the land and with clamming and the great duck hunting in our region and fishing. In fact, Tuckerton used to be called Clam Town. So many people were working on the bay oh, clamming. Wow. And in fact, in the 30s through the 50s, we were selling over 9 million clams a year to Campbell's Soup. So there's a real tradition of uh, food ways here in uh, Tuckerton. And so a couple years ago, we started a festival called Truckerton. Food Truck and Brew Fest. That, that sounds great. Yeah, I think it's great. And a lot of our visitors do too. Um, so this year we're going to be actually having three truckered ins And we've been working with George Miller of Five Sisters Catering. He runs the food truck and he's really been advising us and helping us on our festivals. And he's helping us with the New Jersey Bacon Fest. Uh, so Sorry, Zach. <laughs> but I'm aching for some bacon. Uh, that's all right. You can have it all. Yes. <laughs> so if you're if you're hungry, come to the seaport. If you visit our website, you'll see the whole list. But we, our festivals for the year start um, with our first Truckered in Food Truck and Brew Fest in the spring on April 30th and May 1st. So we're going to have some music by the Pickles, Diablo Sandwich, um, and Nectar and Ambrosia on Saturday. And then Billy Walton, the Pickles, and Gary Phillips will be with us on Sunday. We'll have wine tastings from Lorita. Tons of um, food trucks with all different types of food. We try to have a wide variety. We're going to be doing some uh, food-related programming. You can meet people from Reclaim the Bay and meet commercial fishermen. Um, And then we'll be having, of course, craft brews and lots of fun. It's really fun for the whole family. Are there any charges for this event? If you're a member, you can get in for free. Um, And then it's just our regular admission, which is $8 for adults, $6 for seniors, $5 Five dollars for children five to twelve, and everyone under five is free. How much is a membership? It's forty dollars a year for a family, and you can get in free to all of our events, um, except for just a few like um, Haunted Seaport. Um, and you get a discount in our shop, and you also get a discount on classes. One of the things I love is all of our classes that we do. You come come to the seaport and meet our artist. I remember when I visited with my family way before I ever worked there, I met our decoy carver and I painted a shorebird flatty. But we want people to not just see our artist demonstrating but really get involved. So we've got a wide variety of classes, everything from surfboard shaping to basket weaving, of course, decoy carving. You can build your own boat at the seaport. In April, we're going to be doing rain barrels. We've got a lot of uh, classes coming up as well, which are really fun. So it really makes sense to be a member. It does. I mean, not only do you get the benefit of going to all the classes and all the events that you have, but, I mean, you get into the the brew day, the bacon day. I mean, it's a great opportunity. It's a great deal. And I'll tell you all a secret. If you go on Groupon, we have a deal for membership half off. Ah, there is the (laughs) secret of the day. Yeah, you can get uh, just regular visits. You can get half off or you can get a half off family membership for uh, new members. I'm definitely going on Groupon today because I need to become a member because I need to get down there for some bacon and some beer. We're going to be coming back after the break with Jackie Wood of the Tuckerton Seaport, and we're going to talk about what if she had fairy dust and a magic wand, what she would do to change the Tuckerton Seaport and to help them be bigger and better. Please join the conversation, 732-505-1160, and we'll be back after the news. The news is next. Live from the WOBM Newsroom, the Town Square, New Jersey News Network, and Fox News Radio. Wake up with Jeremy Grunin. News Talk Radio, WOBM, AM 1160 and 1310. Wake up with Jeremy Grunin. Be a part of the show. 732-505-1160. News Talk Radio, WOBM, AM 1160 and 1310. Listen online at WOBMAM.com. Good morning and welcome back. We are here at Wake Up with Jeremy Grunin, and I am Phil Brilliant pitch hitting for Jeremy this morning, and we are joined with Jackie Wood of the Tuckerton Seaport. And before we went to the news break, we sprinkled our fairy dust and we gave her the magic wand 
owned and operated by Jeremy Grunin. I have nothing to do with that. But no, but uh, and asked you if you had unlimited abilities, unlimited funds, unlimited opportunities, how would you work and change the Tuckerton Seaport or do something to make it the best place it could ever be? Well, you are asking the educator there that. So that does influence my answer. Um, I love our youth programs that we do. Um, We have a youth carving club where we're getting kids involved with carving. I do a school outreach program. In fact, I'm doing one today at George J. Mitchell Elementary in Little Egg Harbor. And we bring artists to schools and we do uh, traditional art projects with kids, teach them about our art and history, and then have them visit the seaport. So if I had my way, I I would love every student in the Barnegat Bay watershed, actually every student in New Jersey, how about that, the tri-state area. Remember, you have unlimited opportunities. And I can multiply myself. Multiply yourself. I would love every student in our region to be able to take part in our programs, to be able to meet traditional artists who make decoys and baskets and boats and actually work on their own projects and and learn about the joy in art and and learn about how interesting our history is. I'd love to be able to go out to them at their schools and I'd love to have buses that would bring them all to the seaport and have them all get the chance to visit us. So that would be my dream. I always think buses are great, but I'd love to see a train line you know, that would bring more people That'd down to the wonderful. Jersey Shore. Yeah, I mean, we're really easy to get to. We're right off the parkway. Uh, most people know the parkway and ask what exit are you. So if you're coming from the north, from Tom's River, we're exit 58. If you're coming from the south, you can get off at exit 50. And we're right on Route 9. Um, but yeah, public transportation to the seaport. How about teleporting? If Tele- we have unlimited funds, anything could happen, right? Just Everyone teleport. just teleports people, themselves to the seaport. They think of the seaport and they're there. <laughs> and they're there, yeah. Star Trek of today. I love it because, be. you know, I mentioned our Truckered Inn and Bacon Fest. We've got 15 events this year I know. Year I, I, said, I said, how many events do you want to talk about? And uh, Jackie goes, 15. I said, okay, we have seven minutes. <laughs> I said, I'll talk fast. So in addition to our three Truckered Inns, we've got our Boat Show and Armed Forces Day, which is May 21st. Our bo- uh, Antique and Classic Boat Show used to be in the fall. Now we've moved it up to the spring. We'll have lots of uh, great boats there, both historic and contemporary, Um and you can learn about our maritime heritage. Then if you've got kids and you love pirates, you can visit our Pirates and Privateers Fest on June 11th. You can learn the true story of the privateers during the Revolutionary War who worked in this area and meet pirate reenactors and go on a hunt for treasure. Um, Then my favorite event is the Bayman Seafood and Music Festival, and we're celebrating our 24th year, and it's all about... Seafood from the Barnegat Bay, meeting commercial fishermen, tasting it. So we teach you how to open a clam. You meet the the clammer who got it out of the bay, and then you can taste it. So we do lots of really fun programs. So um, we've got lots of things going on in addition to the Lighthouse Challenge in New Jersey, Haunted Seaport, if you like to be scared in the fall. I do not like to be scared. I I personally don't either, but it's a lot of people do. So it's really fun. We decorate the whole site and have the lighthouse turn into a uh, haunted house. So, so realistically, what you're saying is there is something to do at the Tuckerton Seaport every weekend. I would say so. I mean, we're open 362 days a year. The only days we're closed are uh, Easter, Thanksgiving, and Christmas. But we always have something going on and then lots of great events. So I encourage everyone to visit our website at tuckertonseaport.org and really get a listing of all the classes we've got going on and all of our festivals. So a membership of forty dollars for a family, yeah, gives you three hundred and sixty-two days of fun. That's okay. true, and I didn't even mention our animals. So Bayman kept animals. So when you come visit us, you can see our sheep and goats and chickens, and we've got a touch tank with aquatic animals and baby terrapins. We've got a historic miniature golf course, so you can putt through nine holes and um, learn about the history of our region while you're doing it. Climb to the top of the Tucker's Island Lighthouse. There's always something fun going on. Now, do you find, I mean, I, I'm sure there's probably school trips during the week, um, but on the weekends, do you find, like, if you show up there, you there's no lines, you, you can wait, you can get through everything. Maybe summertime's a little more crowded than, than during the spring. But, again, a great place to bring your family, your kids, and just uh, have a, a whole day of fun. Absolutely. You know, def- definitely, definitely a great place. So I would thank Jackie for joining me this morning. Jackie Wood, the Director of Education and Director of the Jersey Shore Folk Life Center at Tuckerton Seaport and a fellow Rutgers alum, which we are proud of uh, our RU.
but still in my world determining if we're proud of any of the sports that they put out other than wrestling. And uh, all the girl sports are usually pretty good. And we're going to head off the break. Again, thank you, Jackie, for joining us this morning, and have a great day. Thank you so much, Phil. Okay, and we'll be back. Please join the conversation at 732-505-1160. Get more Wake Up with Jeremy Gronin at our website, wobmam.com. News Talk Radio, WOBM AM 1160 and 1310.